This is the lesson video for Chapter 6, Part 1. Welcome to Database Management. My name is Jose Gomez, and today we're going to cover Chapter 6, Reporting Aggregated Data Using the Group Functions. In this chapter, we're going to cover Describe the Group Functions, Identify the Available Group Functions, Group Data Using the Group By Clause, and Include or Exclude group rows using the having clause. In the first section we're going to cover definition of group functions, types and syntax of group functions. Group functions operate on aggregated data and return a single result per group. In the previous example, uh, the previous chapter where we looked at uh, functions, uh, the functions we use only return a single result group functions return a single result per group. That's the only difference. These are the types and syntax of group functions. We have the count function, we have the average function, we have the sum function, we also have the max and min functions, standard deviation and variance. I'm going to go over each one in the, in the next slides. In the second section, we cover using the group functions and nesting group functions. First, we come to the count function. And what the count function does, basically, it counts either fields or records. So let me go to SQL Developer. And again, I'm using <coughs> the HR schema. So if you're going to practice these, uh, SQL says make sure you're uh, in the uh, HR schema. And remember, practice SQL developer is the best. Uh, practicing SQL developer is the best way to learn um, SQL. So here in the first statement, we're going to count, and we use asterisk to refer to all the records in the table. So we're looking, we're going to look at the employees table. So if we run this statement. we get 107. So that means that the employees table has 107 records. And let me show you on the, the table, see if we can employees, we go to employees, click on it. We go to data and we should have 107 107 records, right? Uh, this is simple to get when you look at the data, but imagine if you have tables that are hundreds of thousands, that have hundreds of thousands of records. So this is very helpful. Okay, now we're going to look at an individual column. So we go to commission percent and also in the employees table. So we use count. So we run it. That means we have 35 uh, commission percent. So let's see. Commission percent. Not everybody has commission percent. So we sort it. If we count the people that have commission percent, the records that have commission percent, it should equal to 35. So only if 35 uh, records have commission percent. So we're counting individual columns. Okay, now we go to another example. This example here, we're getting the distinct or unique values of commission percent. So that means it'll only count once. So this and this will only be counted once, right? So let's run that. And sa same as the previous one, but it's using distinct. So we have seven uh, non-duplicate commission percents. Okay, now we go to count. Here we're getting the count for hire date and the count for manager ID. 
Right, so we're getting two different counts for two different columns. I won't get 107 and the other one get 106. Right. So we're getting the counts on hire date. And the other one is manager ID. Right. So what it looks like 107, everybody has a hire date. Not everybody has a manager ID. So that's count, right? That's the first function we looked at. Now we come to the sum function. And this basically adds field uh, values um, and columns. So let me go to SQL Developer. And this year, the first example, sum and tool within parentheses, it, it, uh, it sums two per each uh, record in the employees table. So since we have uh, 117, we have 107 records in the employees table. So every record it sums two. So the double 107 is 214. Now we go to sum and salary so we're gonna add all the values in the salary column so let's just take a look at the salary column so it's gonna add all of this so whatever the total of the of the sum of all of this this is what we're gonna get all right so we get that big number so if you're a manager you might be interested in knowing how much you pay your employees. Now the next example is the non-duplicate values of salary. So you might want to uh, know that. So it's the single occurrence of, uh, of salaries. So that's a smaller number. So what it's saying that this is only going to sum it up once because there's more than one. So it's going to sum non-duplicate salary values. Now we're going to add the commission percent. Let's see what the commission percent looks like. And that's a commission percent. And some some employees don't have the commission percent. Some do. So we're going to add the ones that have them. And 7.8. That's also if you're a manager, you might be interested in knowing that. Again, remember we're, li doing, we're looking at a small table with the 107 records, but imagine if you have 40,000 employees or 4,000 employees. Um, it's it's very useful. Okay, that's the sum function. Now we go to the average function. And the first one is uh, two inside parentheses, and we're using the average function. So this is going to get, it's going to give us a two because it goes through every record, 107 records of the employees table, and, and gives it a two for each record, and then just gets an average. So everybody, if everybody gets a two, then the average is a two. Now we get the average from salary column. And again, imagine if you had a table that was 40,000 records or 1,000 records. So let's run it. That's the average uh, by employee, average salary by employee. Again, if you're a manager, you want to do that. Now we get the non uh, duplicate. Uh, salary values okay and that's the, the number we get now we're gonna get the average commission percent all right so 0.22 is the average commission percent 
now we go to the max and min functions so the first one is get the maximum commission percent so we get that so 0.4 is our highest commission percent so we go here commission percent that's our highest out of all the commissions uh, that somebody gets now we also in the second example we look at the lowest commission percent and let's see what that comes out to so 0.1 is our lowest commission percent so somewhere around here we're gonna get yeah this one is the lowest again remember if this was a table that was 20,000 uh, records this information will be very could be very helpful all right so now we're gonna get the ma min and the max commission percent at the same time so here we get <coughs> uh, 0.1 and 0.4 we gotten those previous in the previous examples but here we get them at the same time now this year we're gonna get the the minim the smallest the earliest hard date and the latest end date and this is from job history table So the minimum, the earliest uh, start date is 95 September 17, 1995, and the latest end date is December 7, December 31st, 2007. Okay, and in our next example, we're gonna get the lowest job ID and the highest uh, job ID from the employees table. So the first one is AC accountant, AC underscore accountant, and the highest is ST underscore man. And these are based on the on the order of the alphabet. Okay, that's min and max. Now we go to nested group functions. And here we're going to get the sum of uh, commission percent. And on department ID, there are some department IDs that are uh, some employees that don't have department IDs. So department IDs, let me go down here. This person doesn't have a department ID. Yeah, just that person doesn't have a department ID. So whoever doesn't have a department ID, we're going to use NVL, and we're going to give them a zero for value, right? And then we're only going to get we're only going to get the departments that are in there are 40, 80, and the ones that were given a zero that didn't have any uh, department IDs. And then we're going to group them by department ID. Okay, so the this we mean by group uh, by grouping by department ID is that we're gonna separate them by department ID. So the ones that didn't have any department ID and were re were replaced with a zero using the NVL function, that's the sum of commission percent. And department, remember, we only wanted 40, 80, and zero. So we have 80. And that's the sum of uh, commission percent. And department 40, I guess nobody had any commission percent in in uh, department 40. All right. So this is a little bit more um, complicated. In this next slide, we had the the nested group function. So we add 
some commission percent and it's within average so again we add some of commission percent and then we get the average alright so again we use the department IDs that are 40 80 and 0 and it groups it up by department ID and then we get the average of all of it so okay so 3.9 is the commission percent sum by we first we sum it up by department ID and then we get the average of the results of the sum of commission percent and that result that average of the sum of commission percent is 3.9 again this is a, a little bit more complicated but uh, these are some of the examples where uh, group functions can be used and this is the end of the lesson video for chapter 6